Welcome everyone to the Halls of Brackets in end brackets justice. Number three! Yes, we've got this far. A trilogy. Another legitimate subject, though. One that has been sentenced and I think is now worth us addressing, as I'm not convinced the sentence was correct. For this, we need Gemma Watts. This is Gemma Watts. Gemma Watts has been a very naughty boy. I'm, I'm not sure at the moment. We'll get to it in a bit, I promise. Gemma Watts is a 21-year-old woman who decided in her infinite wisdom to pose as a teenage boy to, um, yeah, do things to underage girls as young as 13, many of whom, the majority of whom, were G-roomed online. Now, she has been sentenced for this for eight years, which is an incorrect sentence. But understandably, what we like to do here in the United Kingdom is we take all the individual charges and we put them side by side. Instead of doing what you should do, and that is stack them. Gemma Watts travelled the United Kingdom by train to meet these underage people who then believed they were in a relationship with a boy close to their own age. This is Gemma Watts looking like a boy. Yes, quite the conversion, I know. Who would have believed it? A cap was all that was required, and the look of an angsty teenage boy. Although since the hair was hidden in a bun under the hat, and frame hidden under jogging bottoms and a hoodie, it's not surprised that Gemma Watts could pass off as her alter ego, Jake Watton, creative I know. The messages between the victims and <clears throat> Jake were sent via WhatsApp, Snapchat, regular text message, or voice conversations over the phone before meeting them in person. And to evoke sympathy, Gemma Watts would say that her mother had passed away and then would blackmail the girls and threaten them by sending images of sharp objects during those relationships that were sexual, or as I like to call it, statutory grape. I don't like how whenever it's a lady who's involved in this kind of underage shenanigan, it's deemed sexual and a relationship, when in reality it is statutory grape. One of those things that stuck out to me is that even though Gemma Watts is a small person, Gemma Watts is still female and therefore has some female attributes. To hide these attributes, um, Gemma would stuff socks down her trousers, wears boxer shorts and a hat in the bath, and when asked about her breasts, she would say they were moobs and they were a uh, side effect to having once been overweight. Interestingly, Gemma Watts actually had what many could have deemed to be a promising career as a football player. She could have gone on to achieve many things within the sport, had she decided that the sport she was truly passionate about wore blazers and more than likely had a curfew at nine. The prosecutor, Barnaby Shaw, said something that I totally agree with, and that was that Gemma Watts was adept at both manipulating people and the continuing subterfuge. There is a level of premeditation here, this is all planned out and then executed to a plan that she got to work. Like Reynard Sanaga, this is disgusting. Now, the charges that she initially pled guilty to relate to four girls. A 14-year-old from Hampshire, a 14-year-old from Surrey, a 13-year-old from Plymouth, Devon, and a 16-year-old from the West Midlands. It started before she was 16. One of the victims in an impact statement read to the court said that her heart exploded when the police revealed Watts' true identity to her. And in one instance, Watts had assaulted the girl in her mother's bedroom. To get the ball rolling in Gemma Watts' alter ego and grooming escapades, Gemma Watts would use the Jake profile on Snapchat to like the profiles to get the girl's attention. Once the attention was got, then she went to work. Gemma Watts actually lives at home or lived at home with her mother in Enfield, used to share skateboarding videos and use teenage slang 
and flattered them with complimentary messages and pet names as a means to soften the person she was grooming. And much like the prosecutor, I agree with the statement of the defendant practiced a persistent course of deceit on four young teenage girls and indeed members of their family. These victims were not consenting to activity that is sexual because they were deceived into thinking that Gemma Watts was a boy. In one case, Gemma Watts stayed at the home of one of the victims for several days, with family members becoming a little bit suspicious with certain behaviours because they were very female. It should be noted that all of those that the charges come from believed until the police informed them otherwise that Jake was male and not Gemma, the female. I want to read one of the victim impact statements. One of them said that, I'm really glad the police put a stop to the relationship. Initially, when I was first told, my heart exploded, my whole world had stopped. Jake was such an amazing person, I felt like I could tell him anything. Since finding out, I have self-harmed and had suicidal attempts. Damage like that, with a sentence as weak as the one she got, is an insult to justice. Judge Susan Evans, after jailing Gemma Watts for eight years, said that you made a conscious decision to use a false identity in order to enter into relationships with young females with a view to sexual activity with them for your own gratification. Again, please don't call it sexual activity, let's just call it statutory grape. All of the females you targeted were vulnerable because of their age, but also because some of them had been subjected to previous bullying. Their age made it more likely they would be sexually naive, enabling you to get away with your deception. None of them would have consented to sexual activity with you if they had known your true identity. You are still and your age at the time of some of those offences were quite young. You have an IQ at the lower percentile and that is an important factor. You are not only young but you are young for your years, intellectually and emotionally. Ah, I see where we're going with this. <sighs> your age and immaturity combined with issues about your own sexuality goes some way to explaining your behaviour. You do seem to have appreciated just how serious your behaviour has been and the effect you have had upon your victims. You are likely now that you are older to be more confident when presenting yourself as a lesbian female and being involved in adult consensual relationships. Right. I feel like I should put this on record. I don't care how intellectually stunted you are or emotionally stunted you are. Once you cross a line, that is it. Bye. As far as accepting what you've done as wrong, congratulations. It should be noted that Gemma Watts is now a part of an indefinite sexual harm prevention order, as well as being on the sex offenders register for life, as well as barred from working from any children or vulnerable people. I tend to think that the sentence of eight years <clears throat> needs a few, uh, a fair few more years to it. I don't care that Gemma Watts is 21, because based on our system, she'll be out in four years. Hardly a sentence worth serving, really, is it? And while detectives and police and everyone else is cheering that this has happened, I don't think it's worth cheering. The level that this goes back to is ridiculous. And quite frankly, if this was a male, we both know intellect, emotional background, all of that would be utterly irrelevant, and I don't like making that argument. But this is an incorrect sentence because of the level and effort she went to to explore her sexuality on vulnerable people. As with all cases, I'm very much interested to know what you think, so please let me know in the comments below. There is a stream tonight on Twitch, I believe at 7.30pm GMT, and I'm also streaming on Moiski Live at 9.30pm GMT. So if I don't see you over on Twitch or on Moisky Live, I hope you have a fantastic Friday and subsequent weekend. And thank you all for listening.